Hello and welcome back to the Supercoach Hub AFL podcast. You're on with myself, Scobby Ryan, 36. As always, I seem to uh, be having some sore shoulders because Verns isn't here and Supercoach player, but honestly, I have no idea where he is, if he's dead, if he's been shot or if he's been abducted, we don't know. But once again, he hasn't turned up. So we've got a special guest to join in for us tonight. Joshy, how are you, mate? Yeah, not bad. Yourself, how are you going, Scoops? I'm very good, mate. I'm very good. And it's actually nice to have you on, mate, because we've talked a lot of shit. We've um we've gotten over, I guess, the um the barrier of you being an Essendon supporter. And it's actually quite nice yeah. to um talk to an Essendon supporter that's got a little bit of intellect about themselves. I know you're very big yeah. on the rookies. Um and actually very good with Supercoach. So do you do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself, mate? Oh, I've written the articles here and there for Supercoach HQ and Jock Reynolds in the past and um, just done a bit of stuff here and there on Twitter for both BBL and AFL. And yeah, as you said, we've been talking for a few years and I've let go of the fact that you're a Collingwood supporter and um, yeah, you're, you're a decent bloke for a Pies fan, so give you a crack. Oh, I was going to say that's, um, that's a very rare sentence you've just put together there, mate. Um, I will just quickly... You go for Essendon, yet yeah, that doesn't look like an Essendon top in the background. Yep. Well, it's a, a Fife signed top, and it's got like a replica oh, brown, though, oh. and a couple of photos of Fife. And then the one next to it is Ablett, and same thing, signed. Yeah, yeah. very nice. This is my favourite nice. player of all time and the best I've ever seen in Ablett. So. Well, you'll we'll have a Nick Dacos one up there very soon, then, if we're talking about the best player you've ever seen. So, um uh, <laughs> Yeah, let, leave some space up there, mate. Just a quick one on Fife. Yes or no? In the team currently or not? No, nah, no, nah, nah. not doing Ooh. it. I nah, think fair, he's going to be fair. heavily managed throughout the season and he will probably get injured before the season even starts, to be honest. Jeez, I hope not because I'd love a fit and firing Fife sitting in that, fire, oh, so uh, in that forward line. So would I. And it'd just be um, – would really bring back some memories. It'd be fantastic. But we're not Absolutely. talking about forward line mid-prices tonight. We've actually got – the Ruckman segment. And I know that this is, people seem to just think that there's one or two Ruckman. Well, to be fair, th- maybe three. Um, I think yeah, Grundy. Three, four. Yeah, Grundy, Gorn, English are probably the most popular ones. Um, I haven't looked at ownership statistics yet, but I would imagine that those two, those three are your premier Ruckman that are in most sides at the moment. But we will have our um, top 10 countdown and I guess – the average points of where we've got these Ruckman pinged. And I know I personally am not big on draft at all. I think it's a waste of time. Um, but I do know that you're very much into it and you'll give a fantastic insight into the uh, the drafting aspect of things because obviously each team can't just have, you know, seven Grundies and nine Gorns, can they, mate? You've got to be a little no, bit... Um, absolutely not. A little bit smarter with your picks. So we'll start things off. We'll start, as I said, we'll start from ten. I've got Riley O'Brien pinged at a ninety-seven, mate. Yeah, uh, I've got O'Brien a bit higher. I've got Oscar McInerney yep. at ten. I've got him at a ninety-five, yeah. a bit lower. But um, you know, that's just talking about how shallow the rocks can be towards the end of the back or back of the top ten with Oscar McInerney there. But I do have O'Brien a bit higher. Um, yeah, about hundred average. But yeah, yeah, I don't no, mind him there. No, no, absolutely. I mean, if Big O played the Pies each week, he'd probably average about 140 or something like that. He just always seems to um, do a lot of damage when we play them, which is yeah quite annoying because he just looks like a gimp, but he puts the scores out there. Um, at nine, I've got someone that I think a fair few people have flirted with starting. Um, copped an injury maybe one or two weeks ago, but I don't think it'll keep him out of the round one side. He probably gets more of an opportunity now that a certain someone's moved to the Bombers. And that's Tristan Cherry. I've got him in a 98. I think he'll, I don't think he'll be an absolute dominant premier ruckman of the competition. But if his body holds up, I think he's going to actually be a very, very good ruckman. Maybe not so much super coach relevant, so to speak. Maybe as a stepping stone. I, um, I wouldn't go there personally. I can see a little bit of merit in it, but. Got him just under a hundred, around that 98, 99 mark, mate. What's what's your thoughts for number nine? 
Uh, at number nine, I've got Rob with uh, the uh, hundred average, but I do I don't mind Sherry. I just wish she was a bit cheaper, and um, I do remember him a couple of years ago. I think it might have been last season or a couple of years ago when he had that Ford eligibility, and he yes. uh, was yep. priced around two hundred k. Started the year number one ruck and then got injured uh, very quickly. I'm pretty sure, but he has scored decently well without Goldie in. Very limited game sample, but mm. I wouldn't be going there at four eighteen. No, then, it's yeah. just it's it's a little bit pricey, isn't it? Yeah, a bit pricey. Don't like the no DBP, but mm. yeah. I mean, if you slap seventy k onto it, you get a Grundy, don't you? Yeah, which is a no brainer with his no, scoring I, history I, in the block. Ab- absolutely, ah, no, I completely agree. Um, number eight. I've got Nank. I did initially have him at a 106, but I think I think reflecting back on it, that's a little bit high. Um, I don't th- – like nothing against him because he's um, he's a very good ruckman, very good player, except when he knocked out Jake Lloyd um, at the back end of last year and absolutely crucified me in that, in that uh, back end of the year, seeing as Lloyd actually had to miss two games, which was disgusting. Um, but besides that, I've always been a fan of Nank, but – I think, I think maybe around that 103, 104 mark would suffice for him. Um, I don't think he's going to blow you apart if you don't pick him. But then again, I don't think you'd be disappointed if you did. It's just, yeah, I really think there's better options. Just really trying to fill out that, um, I guess that list, the ten order list there. What about you, mate? What's who's at number eight for you? Well, I completely agree. I've got Nank at eight as well. Got him at a 102. But he's he's bound to get suspended at some point, just the way he yeah. plays, as you said. Yeah. Looking out, Lloyd. Um, and I don't think there's been a season that he hasn't been suspended of late. Um, mm-hmm. but he can score big, but he can also score in the eighties, in the seventies, at times. Um, definitely a good draft option. Uh, but I am hoping they do play Naismith as a second ruck, maybe give us a rookie there. But um, yeah, don't pick him in the classic. No, no, and I guess that's that's why it's um, wonderful to have you on as well, mate. Because you've got that draft, I guess, view as well. Whereas Nank, I, I don't think I've ever had him in any kind no. of team, whether that's Super Coach, Fantasy, Real Dream Team, or whatever it might be. Absolutely, just not there at all. Uh, for number seven, I've got the big ogre, big Shrek, Darcy, coming in at a one hundred eight. That's if. If he stays fit, which, I mean, it's just not going to happen. We all know that. Um, Just seems to be the biggest and, I guess, the biggest brute in the game, really. He just lumbers around and he just gets hit outs of fun. And I really think their midfield coming of age, it's just straight to them, hit out to advantage. And you just see that score going sky high. But you just get worried when he goes up for a contest. If he doesn't land with both feet on the ground... It's probably going to be a small earthquake tremor and he's probably going to have a busted rib or something or a dodgy ankle or something wrong with his knee. Like it always happens. It always happens. If he was fit and you could guarantee, say, 20 plus games, I reckon he'd be an all right picking classic. But unfortunately, that injury history, it's just, yeah, not enticing at all. And not to mention you've got that Jackson aspect as well. What Mm. What are you thinking, mate? Who's your number seven? Again, exactly the same. Got got Shrek there. Uh, one yep. of four average, so a bit lower than what you're possibly thinking at the moment. But I think it's just the the Jackson factor for me. I think they might go a bit more of a higher ruck split for Jackson than they did in last season when uh, they're both playing together, just because yep. of how Jackson finished the year in the ruck. So I think that is the reason why I've gone a bit lower. But he can score as fast as any ruckman in the game when he's on. Like it, Absolutely. I've seen Paul where he's gone 50, 60. Um, so that's why I do have him at the 104. But I think Jackson will just stop his scoring too much for him to be a, a pick in classic. Now, I, I completely agree, mate. Completely agree. Um, I, this is – we'll get to some questions now. But before we do, speaking of Jackson, if – now, he's not in my top 10, but because I've more classified him as a forward – but I'm thinking, I mean, if Shrek, 
I don't know, if he goes for a shower one day just after a preseason game, bends down, rips both hammies off the bone or something like that, or eats too many Gillies pies one day and gets a little bit of food poisoning, if he's out for an extended period of time, I reckon Jackson comes on that radar super, super quick. What about you, mate? Is there is there any yeah. love for Jackson if Shrek's not available? If he's not available, absolutely. I do have some love for Jackson. But, um, yeah, just not until there's a long-term injury as a trade-in target. Um, yep. I'm pretty sure yep. Jackson's average without um, Darcy last year was something like a 116, and with him was an is... average of 85. It's a big discrepancy. So you'd I mean, need a long-term injury to do it. That'd, yeah. all, that'd probably put him as F1, wouldn't it? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yep. You'd uh, almost not on... want to have him in the ruck line. No, nah, absolutely nah. not. Yeah. No, I completely but agree, yeah, mate. It's just, yeah, it's just that 85 average without Darcy. It just it scares you off unless there is a long-term injury. Yeah, I know we don't like to wish injuries on anyone. Um, but for Supercoach, you've got to be a little bit selfish here and there. So whatever absolutely. advantage you can get. Um, we'll go to some questions now. We'll see. And if you're a regular on here, everyone that joins knows that sometimes we can't read out the comments, but I can guarantee you and I assure you, we appreciate every single one. We all get a nice little laugh out of it and we will read out and answer, converse about the ones that we actually can talk about. Um, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Are they any uh, readable? <laughs> not Fife is life from Johnny Smith. Johnny Smith, thank you again for joining in. Oh, now, Jesus, Paul <laughs> Davagia. Um, <laughs> I want to hope that's an alias because you have not been blessed with an easy last name. But Patrick Cripps is the greatest. Hey, Nathan, let. Now, I know Patrick Cripps is not relevant at all, but any bloke that can average 115 and then literally just fall off a cliff and be as useless as an ashtray on a motorbike, you are dead to me. Like, the, Carlton is not relevant besides Sam Walsh and Zach Williams. And then again, Zach Williams is a walking band-aid. Like, he's played, I think it's oh, something like 23 games in four years or something like that. Yeah, a couple like, ACLs and yeah, I don't know. Like, you can't pass. predict ACLs, but I mean, at the end of the day, you're paid to play footy, and you're not playing footy, so unfortunate. And Crip, Crip is dead to me, mate. Crip is dead to me. Um, definitely can't read that one out. But Jay, your comment at nine oh seven. Um, I know exactly what you're referring to. Very good. Uh Elijah Hewitt as Ruck One asking for a friend. That might be from Johnny Smith. Elijah Hewitt is actually not a Ruckman, believe it or not. Uh, the mm. surf Johnny wants to know, this is very important. Can I see Joshy's haircut? Is that available? My haircut? Yes. It's just, uh, I've got hat hair at the moment, but it's a bit crazy at the moment. That's why I put the hat on, but nothing, nothing uh, out of the ordinary. Ah, oh, lovely, mate. Lovely. And Josh, you got a mullet. We're getting more hair questions than mm. um, than super coach. Yeah. Oh. Damien. I'm not too sure if this is the Damien, but this is another um, Essendon supporter. He always have teeth rare for a Collingwood fans. Absolutely. Yes. No, completely agree, mate. Um it's just unfortunate that you also go for such a rubble team in Essendon. Um, how much are we paying for Joshy? Joshy, do you want to disclose that? Uh, undisclosed, but you will be getting the check in the mail for me. So uh, undisclosed. No, worth moment. it. <laughs> uh, no, perfect. And finally, we've actually got a question related to Supercoach. Is it worth picking a Ruck 3, Conway, Sweet, or anyone else? Now, if you don't know and if you don't follow Joshy on X or Twitter, this man is literally Cal Toomey 2.0. He knows everything about the draft, all the picks, loves a little phantom draft, which I personally see pointless, but he's very good with this kind of stuff. So what are we talking about for rookie rucks, mate? Do you have any ideas on that? 
Uh, well, Sweet was the number one ruck in Port's match sim and training the other day, but it is worth noting that Soldo's had a bit of an interrupted preseason. I th- I'm pretty sure he was playing in that match sim, but he was rotating pretty heavily forward, and a lot of Port fans suggested that it was just due to getting him back into it. But um, if Sweet can get into that side, I'm probably going to pick him, um, fork out the 158K, wherever it is, just purely because... Um, he can cover for Gorn and Grund- Grundy when they have that opening round extra buy. And yep, he also has a separate agree. buy to them mid-season as well if he's still in the side. So it, it can be very valuable there. And we've seen it before where rucks at a certain club who were the second ruckman, third ruckman, go to another club and average high numbers. You know, one of them's Wits who left Collingwood Absolutely. under Grundy. This, this, we've seen it before. Um, as for Conway, he's pretty expensive at 180k. Um, Dangerfield did talk him up the other day. I think I saw something about um, someone else talking him up, but they've still got Stanley there, even though he's a fossil. Um, I wouldn't be picking him at the, no. the, the price tag. No, I, I completely agree. At the yeah. moment, I'm just running um, running a loop. The uh, West Coast Ruckman 102k Ruck forward at the moment. That's that's literally it for me. But honestly, if if Sweet is picked, and I guess it also helps playing for Port as well for what you've highlighted with the with the I guess you don't have to worry about the buys either, and they share the buy with Freo as well. I think it is it round thirteen. I'm not too sure, but yeah, just, I think it's around thirteen. Yeah, yeah, and it's just it just makes everything. I know you're paying a little bit more. But it just makes everything a little bit more smoother. The cohesion's nice. Instead of worrying about where am I going to get these 18 scores from, all you need to do is literally swap a Ruckman with Sweet. Absolutely. It just makes it so much easier. Um, We'll read one more just because, I mean, it's completely true. Um, Not much of a question, more of a statement. Scoobs is a very, very handsome. Take care. Oh, I completely agree. Um, yeah, can't say much more about that, mate. Um, but we'll get on to our six highest averaging players in the ruck. Now, at number six, I've got someone that you literally just mentioned. Used to play for the Pies, moved elsewhere, seeking more opportunity, and that's Jared Witts. Um, I I don't think it needs any explanation. He'll get hit outs to advantage. He was a very, very high-scoring premium. I think, I believe it was last year or the year before um and he started at a at an extremely low price so that that was obviously um fantastic for those that picked him up but mm. i think he, he'll be he'll be definitely be in that top 10 and i've got him pegged at 110 average for the season he doesn't seem to miss games so yeah and i just think that midfield's evolving for the better and that's a massive positive for his scoring avenues what about you mate who's number six uh, number six, I got Briggs um, at the 105 average. Again, a bit lower than uh, your number six. I, I think he will still average good numbers with the 105, but I think it will peg down a little bit. You know, a full season could tire. Um, you never, you can never trust genuine rucks either. It wouldn't surprise me if they roll at Proust round one, to be honest. But um, yeah, which they won't. But you know, just genuine um, past history, but. Yeah, I've got him at the 105. Um, I do like him for draft, but I, I don't think I can pick him at that price tag when I got him for 250K in the middle of last season. Oh, that was fantastic, wasn't it? Oh, I, remember, I remember every single week it'd be Matty Flynn's kicked two and had, you know, 134 hit outs in the twos. And they'd always play on Sunday and he'd get named in that extended bench. And there was always this drama up until Friday, at like 5 p.m. And then you would just see that Flynn's not in the team. And it's just wonderful. Like yeah. Briggs, Briggs was a machine. I completely agree. I've got him a little bit higher, actually. Yep. Um, but yeah, I mean, he I would assume he'd be a fantastic option for draft, wouldn't he? Oh, absolutely. Probably yeah. well, as I said, had him number six. So, you know, if you're in a fourteen team league, that's the better half of the Ruckman available. So absolutely good pick. I know some of the um 
I'll, I'll use the term gentleman very loosely. The gentleman in the chat, they they love a little bit of draft. Um, Johnny Smith, he's fantastic at his draft. He's um, always asking if anyone's keen on one. Um, but, yeah, I mean, if, if you're looking for a draft, hit him up because he's all about it. Uh, my number five, I actually have Marshall. Now, this bloke, yeah, I right. know we've, we've spoken about – how um, the Saints don't play that many games at Marvel and it seems to be all their premiums score so much better at Marvel. I think between Sinclair and Steele combined, there was like a 28-point discrepancy, which I know that's obviously divided by two. That's 14. It doesn't seem that much, but when you're paying, I guess, for a Sinclair or a Steele, you'd want them to be doing their best. I haven't actually looked into the numbers for Marshall, but... I just, with the options there, I don't think you'd be going for him, especially when Jack Hayes will be back at some stage. Now, don't get me wrong. He's not just going to magically walk in and Marshall's going to be sent to the twos. It's not going to happen. But every single year, Marshall seems to have some kind of foot injury that is either lingering, Mm. hampering, or something's happened at training and he's been pulled from the track and then you don't know. Like, you don't... You don't need that kind of stress in your life. That's what, maybe in like in your point of view for draft, he might be fantastic. I'm not too sure. That's not my forte. But I've got him at 111 for the year, mate, and he comes in at number five. What about yourself, buddy? Who's there? Uh, number five, we've got Wits. Um, yep. Coming off two pretty good seasons. You know, we covered him before. Um, I could, you couldn't pick him in the classic format. Obviously, draft an option again. But as you said, you know, he's rocking to one of the best young midfields in the comp now. You know, they've got Took, who's not as young anymore, but then they've got Rao, Flanders, Anderson. Uh, Rogers will probably roll through there whenever he debuts. Um, but uh, not a pick in classic for me, but I've got him yep. at the uh, average of 106 for wits. Um, again, dropping yeah. down a bit from last season, but still a good yep. average. I sense that... Um... Maybe I've put a little bit of mayo on these averages here because it seems mine are a little bit higher than yours, mate. But I guess oh. when we do when we do a review um, after, you know, we've both won the fifty k and we split it at the end of the season, we'll um we can see who was closest. My number four is the Brigatron five thousand. This man, oh, he is built like a brick outhouse, and he's just a superstar. He's an absolute superstar. I've got him pegged at 116 average for the season. I just think he like he he is that man for their midfield to just literally row from. Um, and it's it's not as if they've got, uh, I guess, a mediocre midfield. Like when you've got the caliber of Cogs, Kelly, Tom Green, that it's not it's not mediocre at all. It's not subpar. They're all good players. I know they've. I mean, they've got their knocks. Sometimes, you know, Kelly literally sneezes and he's done a hammy or an ankle or something's gone wrong. And Tom Green can't kick a ball to save his life. But it's not about that. Like all you need is that big donkey just tapping it down to that midfield, and you're laughing. And same as you, mate. I picked up Briggs last year and I think I'd have stashed at R three. And yeah, by the end of the year, he was literally my ruck one. Um, he he was fantastic, and it's. I guess it's a credit to him, but also a shame as well that he's so expensive, which is annoying. But as as we've spoken about before, maybe in draft, if if you can pick him up, I, I would suggest he's a fantastic pick. But for classic, I'm just not going there. But I do think he'll average around that 116 mark. And he's my number four, mate. What about yourself? Yeah, well, at um, number four, I've got Grundy um, with 114. Yeah, right. Uh, Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, it was a toss-up between him and Marshall at 3-4. I didn't know which mm-hmm. one to put at four. But yep. I just think Grundy, you know, he is getting on a bit. Um, obviously still got a bit of good footy into it, it left in him. But, um, you know, I was looking earlier today. He averaged 122 in the four games that Gorn didn't play last year or, and the including the game that Gorn got injured in. Um and, you know, we're talking about a guy that's gone 130-plus twice in his career, averaged mm-hmm. 121 as well, 115. But I've got him at the 115 at the moment just to be a bit more conservative. But, um, 
you know, he's rucking again to one of the best midfields in the league with uh, Warner, Golden, Parker, Mills, whenever he comes back from his little Mad Monday debacle. But, um, and yeah, they've named him as captain. I mean, that's... Oh, I, I don't understand that. I don't understand that at all. He's definitely got naked photos of horse, I reckon. Um, definitely. But, so you you don't think that he's going to get back to the heights that he once achieved? Well, yeah, one fifteen. It's still very very solid and for his but this, price this tag, man was almost perma yeah. captain for a few years there. He was, he was, but it's just I don't know. I, I need to see it again. You know, in um twenty twenty two, his last season at the Pies. You know, um, uh, one yes, four average from six games he up. dropped off yeah. a little bit. But yeah, um, painful. Yeah, I mean, painful. I'd be pleasantly surprised if he can bounce back to those 120, 125 plus averages. But yeah, not. I just want to see it first. See how he works in that midfield, and he needs his confidence yeah. back first of all. No, no, I completely agree. I think his last ever game for the Pies was actually um, was Anzac Day when he did yeah. his knee. Um, yeah, and yeah, that was that was absolutely horrible. And then obviously, we told him he's not required anymore, and we went and won a flag, and the rest is history. So yeah, fantastic. Um, but we will move on to our questions again. Um, I like this one from Jay. You touched on him earlier, mate. Nice Smith. Any chance of playing? Uh it just depends. You know, we don't know if Uzo likes playing to Ruckman because he's such an unknown quantity as a coach. Um, but, you know, he's come from a club that just struggled playing to Ruckman with Gorn and Grundy. Does that turn him off a bit? Or does he look at Jackson and um, what Jackson and Gorn did as an example of how it can work? Um, they do have Samson Ryan there as well, so you might have to knock him off. But with the Lynch injury, I know he's back probably round one. There could be a chance that Nate Smith gets in there especially with Ray Watts retiring, but it's tough to say without seeing any preseason games or how Uze operates. No, I completely agree. Um, I don't – well, no, Smith hasn't played in ages. I don't think he'd have the calibre to come in and play. Um, so that number one forward. His Tom, as you just said, Tom Lynch has been ruled out of round one, which I guess is a shame for Richmond supporters. But, yeah, I mean, Great for the rest of the league. Yeah, I mean, who cares, honestly? Um, Damien, we've got another one. Not Supercoach related. Only joined the chat for BBL Supercoach stuff. Haven't heard any. Is Matt Short worth 300K in BBL 14? Mate, if you have any kind of sense or any brain cells between your two ears, you'll understand that Matt Short's worth 550K, and that's the end of discussion. Doesn't matter if he's got a single coming up against a triple or whatever it is or a buy starting round one. He is absolute Supercoach gold. Simple as that. But it's, it's just not debatable. Um, Paulie says, the best rookie rucks this season. Joshy, do you want to rank him, mate? I know you just spoke about them before. Um, but I, I would assume Sweet is number one. Is that is that a line? Yeah, well, thinking? yeah, it's a- absolutely. Sweet is number one just because of, you know, that, that the bias I was talking about before can cover for Gorn and Grundy and um, has separate buy to them in the middle of the season. But it's just really hard to rank the three at the moment without knowing what the best 22s for all three clubs are going to look like. Um, but Sweet is my number one. I've, he's my current R3, uh, okay. just because I don't want to be trying to fork around for the cash whenever teams are named late in the preseason or before the opening yeah. round or first round. But yeah. um, I'd have him one... Uh, Nate Smith too, just because of his price, and then Conway three. But all three, I think, will play footy in 2024. It's just a matter of how much. There's one bloke that I haven't seen too much um, conjecture about, and I don't – this is a massive if. This is just throwing a dart blindfolded at a dartboard. But you actually asked me about him a while back. That's Nathan Kruger. If he can get his body right, I and I don't know why he's been put as a ruckman in Supercoach, but he has. Um, if he could get his body right, he, he'd be a fantastic R3, I reckon. 
But obviously that's if all hell freezes over and he magically becomes this um, injury uninterrupted player, which probably won't happen. Um, but yeah, just food for thought as well. Jay's put in Matt Flynn. No. So what's your thought? Well, personally, I just think no, just because I've never really been that big of a fan of Flynn. Um, and who's he tapping it down to? No one. Like, Absolutely what, no one. Exactly. I'm... What, Tim Kelly? I mean... Jinby. Mate. Yeah, I mean, John yeah. Cully, they're so, so young. I just, I don't, yeah, I'm, I'm not a fan of that. And I think he's like 400 and something K, is that correct? I just, yeah, nah, it's no. It's a, it's a no from me. What about you think? What about you, mate? Uh, absolute no, especially with, um, yep. I actually liked the season of Bailey Williams last year. I thought yeah, he, he was, was serviceable, wasn't he, mate? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yep. I had him, uh, I think I actually had him in draft. I picked him up as a waiver pick early in the year as a second bench ruck. Um, yep. He ended up playing a fair bit of games. I can't remember who my ruckman was, but he did get injured. And I, he had some serviceable games. He looked pretty good, young ruckman. And the Matt Flynn pickup didn't make too much sense to me. Um, mm-hmm. But I am reading in the preseason, he's been playing forward a bit, uh, Bailey Williams. So... That yeah. might be why, but I just I can't do it with two ruckmen in the side. No, no, I completely agree, mate. I think um can't remember who it was. There was there was another ruckman that had this amazing run leading into the back end of the year, and they averaged something ridiculous against West Coast, like one sixty or something. And obviously, different ruckman uh, Bailey Williams came out and just completely negated him, which. I definitely didn't see happening. Uh, Johnny Smith said, Blitzarves, Ruck 2. Yes or no, mate? Any interest at all? No interest at no, all. No, completely fair. <laughs> um, yeah. Jay, Gorn and Grundy, set and forget. Um, I I completely concur with that. Yep, absolutely agree. Um, what do you think, mate? Oh, I absolutely agree. And the general public agree as well. Like I think Gorn's in something of 58% of sides I yeah. look today and Grundy yep. 60 something. Uh, but there are people going English, I think 10% and roughly seven going Marshall. But it's yep. set and forget for me. Both of them are significantly underpriced on previous averages. Oh, um, absolutely, mate. Absolutely. And both are number one rucks, sole number one rucks with no second Ruckman really to worry about. So well, I think it's, it's going, set and forget for me. It was interesting to say, and obviously it can't be changed now, but when when Melbourne basically, I guess, shut the door on that Grundy-Gorn experiment and even when they needed a forward, um, Grundy was sitting in the stands watching him go out in straight sets, which, again, if you're not a Melbourne supporter, it was absolutely fantastic. Um, they... Gorn just went absolutely prime Gorn and was just immense. Those those marks, I guess, at both ends of the fifty, and he just he just took it on himself. And he was, it's amazing to see how much difference it actually had on him. Just having that mantle as the sole ruck, and like yes, there'd be pinch hitters here and there, but he was the man. And it'd be fantastic to just have that, I guess, that super coach reliability. When you're starting Gorn, that'd be fantastic. Um, but we'll move on to Johnny Smith. He's obviously a cat supporter. Shame to see no talk about Stanley Blitzarves and Tom DeConey. Well, I mean, <laughs> is anyone actually like, would you consider them in any way, shape, or form? Or would you consider them no. in draft, mate? No, not even in draft? No. no. Uh, DeConey, I would. Uh, Blitzarves as well. Like, both of them will be serviceable, Ruckman in like the later picks. Uh, yep. DeConning always has Pinnett hanging over his shoulder, whether or not they play the both of them or Pinnett, DeConning. But I do think one day DeConning will be a premium Ruckman, but I think yeah. that's two, three yep. years down the track. I think but, that's when he's yeah. playing with his brother, to be fair. Yeah. Yeah, either one of them will leave. Um, yeah. I, I, yeah. Um, Jay wants to know, who are you starting, JJ? I think you just said, alluded to it before, mate. Yeah, Gorn, Grundy, and then Sweet 
at the R three, but that could easily yep. become a loophole if he's not selected. Interesting that you're not starting either one of these two, Draper or Goldie. <laughs> any any Draper reasoning behind that, mate? Well, Draper's not even in full training yet, um, but I always thought there was going to be some point that he would become a premium ruckman. But it's st- he looks miles off it, even when he did have the number one ruck mantle. Uh, yes, he is still young, but I don't think he'll ever reach the high scoring that we really want to see. Uh, and then Goldie, yep. absolute superstar, but it's too hard. I think he's going to be playing ruck forward. So. Yeah, Don't I think it'd be more of an on-field uh, coaching type gig as well for him, which I mean, fantastic for him. Uh, Scoobs, are you starting Mason Cox? Um, look, I'm I'm probably going to trade him in at the buy because by then Collingwood will be like maybe maybe ten games clear on top, and then Cox will just go on a massive run and probably average like one seventy, and then when I win Super Coach, I'll probably dedicate it to him. So yeah, probably after the buy, mate. Yeah. Um, Last one before we get into our uh, top three. Jay wants to know, as a rookie expert, Joshy, is Mally in your side? Yeah, it's a, a 102K north. Um, is this the fella pickup? called Finbar? Yeah, Finbar Mally, yeah. I don't know what you would have had to have done to your parents to get that much hate from them for them to call you Finbar, but uh, each to their own. Each to their own, mate. Is he in your side? Yeah. Nah, not in my side, but it's probably going to be him or Livingston if I do go that loophole. Um, yeah, spot on. I agree. The, yeah. I think if there is going to be a North rookie to play, I think mm-hmm. I don't know if he's 102K. I think he might be a bit more. But um, Hamish Free, he's a 25-year-old mature age ruckman. So if Jerry doesn't get up round one, he's a chance if they don't play Coleman Jones or something, given he is a mature age pickup. But yep. um, mainly could be in my side if I do go a loophole. Just going to look at the Sunday teams, who plays the most Sundays. I think it's a West Coast fella. Yeah, it, it must be. They yeah. always get that graveyard 440 Sunday shift. So Yeah, because who wants um, to watch him? No one. Absolutely no exactly, one. Exactly. Exactly. We'll read one more and then we'll get into our top three. Will Asava affect Sweet? He can also play in the Ruck. It's actually fairly good... Fairly good point from uh, Johnny Smith. What do you think? Because uh, I, I don't think he will. I think they've they've nah. brought sweet they brought Asava over there. Sorry, to basically just be another pillar alongside Alir Alir. Yeah, yeah. They want him as that lockdown key defender, so Alir can do more of his intercept work that he was so successful at in I think it was twenty twenty one when he was all Australian. Yeah. But um, with Port, if they're playing sweet. Uh, and Soldo, then obviously they'll share the ruck duties. If it's just Sweet and Soldo's not playing, I think Finlayson might be the relief ruck or Dixon. I don't think it'll be Radigalia. Um, yeah, and whoever they go with, I don't think they will affect the number one ruck anyway because it'll just be a relief ruck role, you know, 20%, 30% of the game. Nothing to really worry about, like even like a Finlayson or something. Yeah, yeah, and it, yeah. it'll be. Yeah minimal the amount of time they play but if it is soldo sweet then that's when we might have a problem it might be a bit more 50 50 split yeah but, uh, yeah the salva won't do anything i don't think no no fantastic mate fantastic we get back into our well, top three um and i know if you what you've watched before but top three which is quick fire straight through it three two one what you think they're going to average um and obviously, I've had mine at a little bit of a higher average to yours, but it'll be interesting to see where we end up here. My number three is Maxi Gorn at 124. I just, once Melbourne realized or basically shut their eyes on the idea that Gorn and Grundy can work together in tandem and they're going to be this unstoppable force, and then Grundy was just completely rejected from the team. Didn't even, I mean, when they were screaming out for a forward, he wasn't even considered. And Gorn just went nuclear. He just went absolutely immense. Like, I, as I mentioned before, those marks on the defensive 50 and the attacking 50. So, like, I remember one final, Gorn was sitting at like 70 at half time, and then he went to 90 at three quarter time. And then in that last quarter, he just went bang to 160. Like, it was immense. Yeah. Um, 
And he's always had the power to do that. Always had the power to do that. Number two, I've got Grundy, who just pips Gorn at a one two five. I've loved this man for so, so many years. And then obviously that relationship was broke and he had to leave. But he's the around the ground work of him. I think he works better than Gorn at around the ground. I think Gorn has better hands in a marking contest. But I think Grundy is much better as a uh, on the ground type of a ruck rover, if that makes sense. But yeah, I just think new start at Sydney. Like, who's going to be his competition as a ruckman? There, there was a clip posted the other day and um, on Twitter, and it was talking about how Grundy was this amazing ruckman, which we, which we obviously all know. But he was going up against literally no one. Like who who's who's going to be training against him? Is it going to be like Hayden McLean? Like what are they going to do? Grundy Peter Laddams. Just, exactly. And I mean, <laughs> yeah, if it's a joke. if football was based on looks, like Laddams would have no talent because that man has a rough nut on him. But at He's the got end some of the day, like, tattoos as well. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> he there is no way that Grundy is not playing one hundred percent game time as a ruckman. And that leads me into number one. It's Timmy English. That's if if he's fully fit. I mean, it seems the man's got concussion every second week here and there, which is unfortunate for him. But he's priced at what he is for a reason because he was the best ruckman last year. And there was a lot of conjecture around preseason about, oh, you can't start him because he's injury prone. All this is going to happen. But it, it never eventuated. He, he just... Like, I, I remember a few years back, English was just this beanpole peanut-looking fella that couldn't do anything. And now he's a superstar ruckman. And I really think he'll be the number one come season's end. And that's, yeah, Gorn at three, Grundy at two, English at number one. What about yourself, mate? What's your top three? Yeah, well, I've got Marshall at the number three, just um, yep. with a 116 average. It's just, yep. it's the fact that, you know, we could see we, – we always knew that he had that massive year in him, but he always had someone lingering in the background as the R2. who escapes me at the moment. Oh, Paddy Ryder was one of the ones that was really affecting his chances of going to that extra primo status. But, um, you know, averaging his be- career best years, la- career best numbers last year under Ross Lyon, I uh, don't think that role changes too much. You know, same coach worked last year. You are right, though, in terms of the lingering injuries. There's always something, especially with his foot. Uh, sometimes yeah. even his back, I think. I might be wrong with the back. But, um, you know, Tom Campbell was fit all year last year. And I know he's a he's not the greatest player ever, but he was absolutely blitzing it in the VFL with massive numbers. I think he was named emergency pretty up pretty much every single week. Um, yep. Ross Lyon was quoted for saying that he's close, he's close, he's close, but he never got in. And I think that is because Lyon really rates him as that big game time number one ruck. But um, as you said before, Jack Hayes, he could be a problem, but I do like just, his Ford craft, Jack Hayes. I, so Yeah, no, yeah. I completely agree. And it just, it just seemed to me like that it, it was always like – the Briggs and Flynn issue was exactly mirrored by Campbell and Marshall. Yeah, yeah, it was weird. Always, like, uh, always yeah. named in the in the squad, always extended bench. They'd always play the Sunday game, so you wouldn't know until Friday five pm. And every single week was the same. They'd always be in the squad. You'd always think, "Oh God, is Marshall going to have another ruckman in the team?" or is Briggs going to have another one? And it never eventuated because they never made the cut. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's, yeah, it's the game we play. There's always something mm. that makes us worried, but at the end of the day, probably have to worry less because it doesn't mean that much in the end all the time. But um, at number two, I have gone a bit lower than you, going at 122. It's just yep. that uh, patch once Grundy was dropped. He averaged something like 100. 30. Um, yeah, it was, it, was, like, it was crazy good. Yeah, 130.4 from eight games without Grundy. And he had a 200 something in that stretch. Um, yeah. Yeah. He's just, he is unbelievable. Just the way he can um, intercept, like you said, 
his tut work. And for the size of him, you think he can't get around the ground and be mobile, but he he can. Um, no, he picks I, I, up the I ball think the, around the ground. The only the knock on him is probably his kicking. Oh, absolutely, especially yeah. for goal. Unless he's yeah. fifty, yeah. Out. he always seems to drill them from fifty out. But yes. set shots with yep. inside fifty, he's he's no good. But you know, he's averaged one hundred and twenty plus four times in his career. Um, 113 odd in 2022 but that was the jackson factor and then mm. last year obviously the the grundy factor is what has him so underpriced at i think the 104 but that 130.4 average from eight games without grundy last year it's got to mean something um a year older you know he's wrong side of 30 it might this footy might start to catch up with him father time but I think what we saw at the back end of last year and given how recent it was, he's still got some very, very good footy left in him. Uh, and then Absolutely. at the top, Tim English, 124 average. Um, regresses a bit from his 128 last season. Uh, just the, just a feeling, no really evidence or stats to back it up. Just just a feeling, yeah. you know, 128 is a big average. Um, but then again, he's so talented but dealing with those migraines in the preseason only just getting into main training now that's a slight concern for me but um we can, when you can save so much money on gorn and grundy who have done it time and time again i think you, you can't pay north of 700k for english i mean it's a it's a lot of like, that's it's the difference between you know a rookie and a mid price right there um english absolutely and- and gone off even crundy to that extent yeah but yeah no that's wonderful mate absolutely wonderful i just i have i have this um little feeling like english seems it's a bit deja vuish of last year actually how there's all this about his injury record blah 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 and then he's never injured and he's the number one ruckman so yeah there's a little bit to think about there but that's, that's wonderful for our top 10. And we get to some questions. And Johnny wants to know, are you worried about Gorn being one year older and prone to injury? I'll let you take this one, mate. What do you think? Well, last season, I think it was round two or three when Gorn did go down and Grundy got to get that three or four games in without him. It looked like he did a season ender. Nee, he was crying in the rooms and... Um, you know, I thought he had done his ACL again. Even he's done it twice in his career, but uh, yep. um, but he got back early and then played out the rest of the year and then dominated at the end of the year, and that kind of gave me a, a feeling that the injury prone. Yes, he's injury prone, but his body, I think, still can hold up to the rigors of AFL footy. Um, so it, it is hard to say. You know, father time catches up with everyone in AFL or any sport unless you're someone like LeBron, but um, it's really, it's really hard to say, but yeah, he has done two ACLs in his career. Um, Granted they were a few seasons ago now, but yeah, other than that, I'm pretty sure his availability or the amount of games he's played has been pretty good. So um, hard to say, but what what do you think? (sighs) Not really, honestly. I mean, the way I see it is he played or he played with Grundy. So he wasn't actually the sole ruck and we all know that. So therefore his main job of being a ruckman is halved. So it's just, I, I, yeah, it's a bit hard to say, but I just don't think he's not, he definitely wasn't the sole ruck. So therefore, he hasn't put in the same amount of rucking effort, if that makes sense. So it's, it's almost as if, you know, he shared 50% of the workload with someone else. So now he'd be fine to pick up that other 50%. Um, and I don't think like, yes, he has been injured, but I don't think he's prone to injury. That's just my opinion. Anyway, I mean, we could wake up tomorrow and he's done his knee again, uh, as you alluded to earlier, he's done it twice. So it, I mean, could be completely um, relevant, but hopefully not. We also have Johnny again. This is I like this. Funny, none of you are talking about wits. Is it because of the early buy? Honestly, mate, I just like 
why? What? Why would you go there? I don't. I don't understand it. He's five hundred ninety-three k. He averaged one hundred and six. So for five hundred ninety-three k, why would you not just drop ten k off that and pick up Max Gorn, or drop a hundred k and pick up Brody Grundy? I don't. I don't I'm not. Uh, yeah, I don't follow that at all. Um, yeah, I'm. I'm not big on wits in any way, shape, or form. Unfortunately, what about yourself, mate? Have you, have you had any, I guess, any structure with wits in there at all, or no? No, nah, haven't even. Look, to be honest with you, it's been gone and grundy since the team picker opens. I uh, haven't yep. flirted with anything else. Um, but you know, I know that John Smith does play draft, so he is a, a definitely a pick in draft. But um, yep, yep, don't go near him. No, I I agree. I agree, mate. I just think you can save money going with better players, so why wouldn't you do that? That just seems logical for me. Um, Paulie said, honestly think Fullerton will play the forward ruck role at Melbourne and hurt Gorn a little bit. Well, hasn't Big Fullerton done a hammy? I'm fairly sure he was injured. Yeah, he did a hammy in there, max simulation. Um, I think the report was that he is going to miss start of the season. He might yeah. have... Um, be closer, but I, it's obviously not going to be a long term injury, so he could be coming in round two, three, four. Um, but I don't know, I think even if he was to play, it would be predominantly as a forward. Um, yep, and yeah, I don't think he'd be taking too much ruck minutes off going, especially because we saw how dominant he was without Grundy, and there was a massive reason why Grundy was dropped to the VFL because they wanted gone playing those ruck minutes. Yeah, no, I completely agree. Completely agree, mate. Uh, Johnny, again, uh, sounds like maybe a little bit of a draft question, but it's for you. Um, Cherry is injury prone. Who is back up Ruck for North? Uh, it's, I, I think it would be Coleman Jones. I think it would yep. be him. I, I'm not a massive fan of him. He's one of those players that's too good for the VFL but not good enough for AFL. Um he has had games here and there in the AFL where he's shown a bit of his talents, but more as a forward than a ruck. Um, but I just think it's either Coleman Jones if Jerry doesn't play any games um, yeah. or it is that Hamish Free, that 25-year-old uh, mature mm-hmm. age ruckman. You know, you're not picking 25-year-old ruckman just to develop in the VFL. Uh, so I think... They might have a plan for him or have him as that number one backup, Hamish Free, but it's just Jerry or Coleman Jones or Free at the moment, I think. Yeah, no, I completely understand. I remember Hugh Greenwood did a little bit of it as well, Um, but obviously, yeah, obviously he's not going to be um, the main ruck. Burns, it's good good to see you here, mate. Look at these sexy beasts, but would like a cheeky hairline check. Um, yeah, mate, no, no worries. Their hairline is the the exact same as it has been. Um, yeah, just still chilling there, mate. Um, I don't know. Yeah, it's it's nice of you to actually rock up for once. Um, actually, no. To be fair, Vern's you've you've been very good, mate. Um, first question in. And you contribute so much more than pleb. That bloke is just an absolute, well, it's in his name, a pleb. But, yeah, um, it's, yeah, thank you for coming in, mate. And hairline checks whenever you want. Uh, We've got Grant Martin. Oh, now, God, Jesus. This is a wonderful one. Cashy Choker spitting facts. Josh, is there any backstory to that, mate? Uh, he's definitely referring to me because I lost to him in our Supercoach BBL Cash League Grand Final. Ah, uh, yes. It's a touchy subject for me. I went undefeated through the whole season, prelim, everything, and then lost to him in the granny. And my rank was a lot better than him, so it hurt a bit. Oh, wow. The, he actually sent me a DM the other day, told me that he's starting with Josh Bootsma. So don't yeah, listen right. to anything Grant's saying. Um, 
Uh, but I do, I do know that if anyone wants to get in contact with him for any kind of Port Adelaide information, he is your man. He absolutely knows everything about the Port Adelaide Football Club and any super coach nuances, anything like that, inside word, this man is always at the training ground. So if you need Port Adelaide information, Grant Martin on X, he is your man. Um, geez, a lot of love for Joshy coming in tonight. I like it. Will Joshy be back next week for forwards? Please say yes. Do you want to be back for forwards next week, mate? I think I'm free next week. I'll, I'll give it a go Perfect. if you want me to. Absolutely. Absolutely. We'll lock you in. Ooh, John Smith. I like this. I like this a lot. Are you not worried about missing out on a premium player score if you're starting Dacos? Well, we all know that he's the best player in the AFL. And Grundy. They share the same buy together. Now, we've had a conversation regarding this, obviously, um, off air. We've conversed about this quite a bit. What's your point of view about it, mate? Because I know you're obviously taking the buys fairly seriously, but you're also not, I guess, picking a team based solely on them. So what's your what's your opinion on it, mate? I think in terms of players that present value like Grundy, Gorn, uh, Billings to an extent, and even players like Walsh and Took and Flanders. Uh, you can have a look at them, but I think the higher end premiums like your Dayacosses, your Tr- Petrarchas, I would be leaving them out just because um, they don't. Like, obviously, they had massive years last year, but they don't present any real value to you. Um, so I've been picking my team. Uh, ignoring buy players for players that do have value um, and you'd be silly to leave out just because they miss one game. But I think the high-end players like Dacos, you can pick a Sicily or a Stewart and really be missing out on not too much points when Dacos is playing between those three. Like They they match um, Dacos' scores. I think even Stewart last year, he averaged 118 um, when you take out his injury in the first round. So... Yeah. That's more than Dacos. I know uh, Dacos had that McGuinness tag slash injury game, but he did play most of the game anyway. Um, but, yeah, in, uh, I'm not too worried about it in terms of the value players, but definitely um, worried about missing out on a premium score. What about you? Um, look, look as, as anyone that has interacted with me before knows that I am Dacos' biggest fan, but there is... Honestly, there is so much merit in not starting him. So, so, so much merit to it. Um, you've highlighted it. It's been highlighted. We've spoken about this when we did our defenders as well. When um, we've had general conversations, it's like you – thing that worries me is how are you going to get him in if you don't start him? And this, this applies to Bont, this applies to Laird, this applies to... If you start with Stewart and Sicily, no worries at all. But how are you getting Dacos in? And I understand that he's got, um, obviously, the McGuinness tag. Uh, is it Ryan Clark that was delisted by Sydney? Yeah, he's delisted yep. by Sydney, yeah, so but he, the Saints in round three have Win Hager, Saints. which is also something yeah, exactly. that I'm kind I, of worried I, about. Absolutely. You've got... You've, I guess you've... You got to be cognizant of all these things, but I just keep coming back to how, like for instance, Dakes is six fifty k, right? That's he's not the highest price player in the game, but it's it's very similar. Like apply the same thing to Bont as well, because there's been conjecture about whether you start the highest um, priced player in certain positions. So if you're not starting them, how are you getting them in? Because if you've got if you've got Dacos at six fifty, say he drops seventy five k, right, and he's down to five seventy five, no worries. Who are you trading out that has made that much money that you can bring a player that's worth five hundred and seventy five k in, plus a basement price rookie? Say that's one twenty three. You need two players to have made a total of seven hundred k, so three fifty between them at the first cycle of upgrades. I just don't think that's going to happen. Yeah, that's the it's the age-old debate, though, that, or the age-old saying where you can't have everyone. You know, it, yeah. the yep. same applies 
really for Sicily, for Stewart. Um, I know Stewart uh, and Sicily, you know, Sicily can tend to have his off games. You know, we saw one yep. against Saints last year. I think he scored a 50-something. Stewart injured here and there. But it applies for everyone. Like, it's going to apply for Bont and Pally. If you don't pick him, he's not going to drop much. Um, and those high-end premiums, you can't have them all, but it's getting them in that's going to be the challenge. And that absolutely is going to be a challenge to get Dacos in. Um, like you said, probably going to have to be a double downgrade around the buys. Uh, that is why I do have that hesitation not to start him, given how yep. anyone can average those type of numbers in their th- uh, second year is absolutely yep. ridiculous. So that is a worry. But, yeah, as I said, just the high-end premiums, I think at this stage my plan is to just leave them out. Yeah, no, that's – I mean, as I said, there's a lot of merit in not starting Dags. Because I just think even, even if you downgrade the week before, you're still using that cash, putting that towards him. So theoretically, you're still going two down, one up. It might not be in the same week. It could be if you boost, but I just don't – I don't know if you want to be your first upgrade. You want to be ditching two rookies and going down and then your third rookie going up. If you're going to have two rookies – that are averaging well and doing fantastically like that. Why do you want to trade them anyway? I know we all want to upgrade. We all want to upgrade. We've got 40 trades and you want to get into it and make your team as primo as possible. But I just don't think it's worth it. But it's, I mean, it's a fantastic talking point. I will add watching a lot of the training videos, it seems as if um, whenever Dakes has been, I guess, off half back, someone has been running with him, whether it's been a McCreary or I saw even um, Reef, Mc- Reef McInnes was running with him the other day. And then, as I'm sure most people people have seen, there's been a few clips on X where um, Geordie degoey has been getting into him quite a bit. And I think that's yeah. actually like a little, um, maybe like a simulation for the year because like it's clear he's going to get attention. You either deal with it or you back away from it. And it, I just don't think he's going to uh, squander when someone comes up to him anymore. It just doesn't seem like that. And I think they're actually putting tactics in place at training for him to either overcome that or or avoid the attention. But, yeah. Um, The Surf 420, if Dacos is the best player in the league, why doesn't he have a Brownlow? Bruce Free. Very true. But I will remind you that... Well, he did kick the opening goal of the grand final. He has a premiership medallion, and that's more premiership medallions than half the Brisbane team, which I know you go for. And it was fantastic beating Brisbane because we all know that they can't play anywhere else besides the Gabba. Um, this one's for you, Joshy, off Supercoach. Do you have any tips on growing a mow? Myself and Clarkie could use some tips. Any tips, mate? Uh, for years, I thought that just the more you shave it, it would grow, but it wasn't the case. Um, mm-hmm. it would be shaving it clean off and it wouldn't be growing back properly. But what I tend to do is I get the electric shaver and I just trim the bottom of it when it starts to overgrow the lip and then um, just keep shaving and it just grows thicker and thicker and thicker. I'm not sure Very about nice. you though. You've got a quite a nice... Yeah, it's um, fairly dirty there looking... <laughs> Or getting that uh, Markov type business going on at the moment, but that that'll have to go soon. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that's I guess yeah, that's how you do it, mate. Grantos, the Port Adelaide superstar. Thoughts on fading older, expensive primos that can start slow for the cheaper upcoming breed like Golden LDU, etc., to free up more cash for lack of options forward and back. I just. I, like it's it's definitely a fairly good idea, but how much cash are you actually freeing up? Like, who are you going from to a Golden and an LDU to free up cash? Like, are you ditching a Bond? Are you ditching a Laird? Like, is it is it worth it? Are you getting that much coin that you will actually be able to make a significant upgrade in other areas of your team? I don't know if you are. Because I, I don't think, think so yeah. either. There's really uh, only Bont that you would get value from. And even Bont, he's only 
28. Like he's still the right side of 30. Uh, yep. Maybe, maybe only um, 650. So it's only 20, 30 K more. Exactly. Like what, what difference is that? Is that going like from what, like a Flanders to a Caleb Daniel? Yeah. Or, something like um, that. Yeah. Back. Like, are we talking like a Hayden Young up to, I don't know, like a, a Jackson. Sheasel or a short yeah, or Sheasel. something. Yeah, yeah. I, d- I don't know. I mean, if you can if you can work it where you're banking 100K, then, I mean, it, it definitely could work. I, I don't know. Um, yeah. Um, Paulie's getting into Dakes in the chat. That's fantastic. I know Paulie's a Hawthorne supporter. That's wonderful. Um, but, yeah, just, yeah, I mean, just remember the pies, the premiers. We're going to get into our last little bit here. And this was actually inspired by Joshy. This was fantastic um, initiative by him. So we did this today. Now, I guess ownership may have changed since then. But player on each line under 5% owned. Now, mate, you came up with this. You take it away. Yeah, well, in the back line, I've got Houston, who's actually currently my D3, which some might say is a bit deep down back, but I, the Forza are an absolute write-off that I've just completely uh, not put much money into them. But Houston, who's in 5%, um, I posted something on Twitter the other day about his run uh, home last season. It was something like 118 average from the last, 14 or so games, including finals, I think. And when you see those type of numbers and then he's getting an All-Australian blazer, Port uh, going out in straight sets but finishing top mm-hmm. four, I just think that's a role that Ken will stick with. You know, he's main distributor off halfback. Um, and they're massive numbers, 118 average over a decent sample size in 14 games. I think at sub 600K, uh, just five percent owned, and the perfect buy in yep. just the buy that they share with Fremantle. I think he's someone that really needs to be looked at. How about you? Yep. Who do you have in defence? Uh, or, or what's your thoughts on Houston? No, I mean, well, he kicked a goal after the siren to sink your mob. So I mean, he's all right in uh, my book. Um, yep. Yeah, and I, I know you were over the moon with that result. Absolutely over the moon. Um, uh, one thing I keep coming back to is that buy. Like that, it's just so good. So good. Yeah. Especially sharing with Freo. Like Freo are probably, and I I mean, I could be overstating it, but probably the most super coach relevant team this year. Oh, and I you, genuinely agree with you. Yeah. Yeah. And it, like if you can chuck in, say, if a Josh Sin starts getting games, that would be fantastic. Um, Rookie price, 123K. I saw he was playing off halfback in a um, match sim. Don't know if it was A or B team, but if he can get in there, that'd be fantastic for the bench. You got Butters, who, in my opinion, is an absolute auto pick. You don't need to explain that. And if you can slot a defender back down there, like you're looking good for the buys before you're even thinking about it. Um, just, to, just to go off with that, that's fantastic. Um, my defense was uh, Connor Buderick. If, if he yeah. can get that um, Jaden Short role that I guess Dimmer has alluded to, he was in 3% of teams when I looked. And I know he's a little bit pricey at 300K, but if he can get that, that would be fantastic for us. That would be awesome. I mean, I'd much rather find the cash for him than have um, the walking Band-Aid in Zach Williams in my team. I think that's a fair trade-off. 100K for a little bit of durability, that's a win in my eyes. Who's your midfielder, mate? Uh, in the midfield, you're not going to like it, but I do have Parrish. Um, we've oh. quite a few times had a couple yeah. of arguments about this, but I don't yeah, know. Right. It's just, <laughs> we had a little bit of an argument about his kicking on Twitter, but well, I you think know, it was a it, good converse of opinions. It, yeah, it was good. Yeah. It's just, you know, it's a player that he's had that 114 average before and he's had the another 110 average the year before uh, the year after that 108 yep. last year injury affected that his cbas were high under his first mm-hmm. year in brad scott um but it's just yeah that kicking uh efficiency which we did talk about um but 
as an Essendon fan, we've got this kicking kicking specialist to the club called David Rath, and he's been working with Sardis and Parrish very closely. Um, they're the two players that he's spent the majority of his time with. Um, and, you know, as an Essendon fan, I talk to a lot of people that do watch training, and apparently his kicking has improved. And I know it's training. I know the pressure's off. Yeah. I know all that yeah. stuff. You know, but, you know exactly yeah. what I'm, yeah. Um, yeah, but uh, it's just for someone who gets the ball that much and the the contested possessions he gets per game and the inside 50s clearances, um, you know, the high impact stuff, if he can even yeah. just fix up that kicking a tiny bit, I do think he could be an option. But it, it, even at the moment, I don't even have him. No, no. I, and like I, I, I mean – to keep it as respectful as possible towards him, in comparison with, say, Zaki Merritt, if Merritt has the ball 12 times and Parrish has the ball 40 times, like, I'm worried about Merritt's 12 posies over Parrish's 40. Like, it just it just seems to me that he's not one of those players you think, oh, shit, when they get the ball against your team. Like, I mean, Parrish could have it 60 times. And I'm not worried because I know if he's if it's in the contest, he's getting that contested possession, absolutely. But normally it's just those little one-two handballs and then it's a boot to the boundary or it's just a kick yeah. forward to no one. Um, but we, we could go on for ages about that. Oh, but you're right. If, if he does increase his um, disposal efficiency, absolutely. My midfielder, and I can't believe he's so criminally low-owned because I don't think people are thinking about him um, for the future and just as a midfielder. But if Nick Martin is going to be running everything out of your back line, this man is an absolute lock. I know he's 490K. He was, I think he was 3% owned when I had a look today, but he was elite on the wing last year. And like, honestly, I love laying the boot into Essendon more than any. Well, Probably not as much as I love getting like getting stuck into Carlton supporters for their absolute rabble of an establishment. But if Nick Martin is running that ball out of halfback, he is exactly what Essendon need. Like he has skills, he is so silky, and the finishing touch. He's the cream on top, I reckon. And we all know if you're playing off halfback, it's just so easy for points. Um, but that, yeah, that's that's my midfielder, mate. That's my midfielder right there. Who's your ruckman? Uh, there's not much there, but I have gone with Sherry. Uh, just yep. even the price, you know, I I can see him averaging 90, 95. And whether that's enough to warrant to pick him as a stepping stone, I don't think it is. But given there wasn't much there, I went with Sherry. But I did look at Conway at 180K. Yep, yep. No, I... I, I, I went for Briggs just because of the love affair last year. He's um, We had a question regarding Wits before, um, how we weren't speaking about him enough. And I think if you just literally put 10 more K on top of Wits, you get Briggs. And I would feel so much happier with him there. And, yeah, I mean, he, he's just a monster. And I noticed he, he, um, he's, he seemed to kick very – uh, quirky and interesting goals last year. So not from like set shots or anything or – it'd just be like from out of the ruck. And obviously, yep. as you know, ruck, ruckmen, if, they, if they're kicking snags, their points per game is just going sky high. So, yeah, it was it was nice to see him do that. But, yeah, definitely under 5%. Wouldn't begrudge anyone for going there. It's just the early buyers, they're, they're a killer. And lastly, who's your forward, mate? Uh, it's a, a player that I have been toying with F1, F2. He's not in there at the moment, but Dylan Moore. Uh, just, yep. you yep. know, he's not someone that needs those CBAs. You know, he averaged mm -hmm. 94 in 2022 from 16 per game. Uh, the 91 last year from just 3% per game. And he started last year slow uh, and then he ended the year with a pretty healthy average. I think it was very high 90s. Mm -hmm. In uh, I can't remember how many games, but I have been looking at him just because he's a younger player. Uh, I think mid twenties. You'd think maybe progression will 
progression growth. But that yep. Hawthorne midfield is pretty stacked with young talent. So don't pick him on the thought that he's going to get more CBAs. But I, I think he doesn't need it to score and he'll be a solid 90 to 98 average option, even as a yep. high half forward. Yeah. No, I, absolutely nothing wrong with that. My um, my pick is on the lower end of the scale. And this is Gold Coast, man. It's not Sammy Flanders because clearly he's not under 5% owned. It's actually Alex Sexton. Now, this bloke's playing off halfback. And I thought there was something wrong with the app when I checked his price. And it's been, it's been fantastic that the AFL have actually been releasing like little notes on their app about match simulation and stuff because it's, I mean, it's actually easy to find information now, which which is wonderful. And he's just been off halfback. And as we know, halfback is absolute gold for points, especially someone priced at 133K. It's rookie price territory. It's absolutely yeah. wonderful. Um, my only concern is I've just had such a bad time with Gold Coast players in the recent past. I remember I bought in Took and then got injured. Started with Flanders last year. And what did Pie Man Stewie do? Stewie Ju do? He just played him at half forward and it was disgusting. And then Flanders got dropped and then Flanders come back in and he was literally one of the best forwards for the back end of the year. It was just... Terrible. I just have PTSD from Gold Coast players, I think. But at 133K, if he's going to be off halfback, that is just like there is no better role for super coach. And you can pick him as a forward. You get DPP, it'd be fantastic. It's It almost seems too easy for me. But, yeah, that's, that's my forward, mate. Um, we'll move on to the questions. Again, we're getting quite a few, so thank you for everyone that stuck around. Um, Johnny's... Johnny Smith said, this is not really a question, but a statement. Dacos is 61% owned. That's crazy. If he fires, we will be in huge trouble. I don't know if he's the highest owned player in the game. I could be wrong, but... I think it this... might be Harley Reid, I think. Oh, but... of course. Yep. Yeah. Yep. They call... um, And I don't know how many people play um Fantasy Premier League, but they could... there's a term used, um, shield picks and sword picks. Sword picks are where you almost you're looking for variants of upside. So players that are very risky, but can, I guess, really climb you up the ranks. Shield pick is someone that basically everyone has. You're not really concerned about how well they go, but you're concerned if you don't have them. I think Dacos is a perfect example of a shield pick and 61% just backs that up. Like You're right, Johnny. If he goes bananas, how do you get him in? Like I just yeah, I'm I'm not too sure. Um, Johnny again, he says, Luke Ryan, uh, three percent owned. Any love for Lukey Ryan at all, mate? I I do like Luke Ryan. Uh, last year I picked him up quite late in draft, um, and he was awesome for me. You know, he really broke out, took kick-ins, but there was. Pretty much every single week, I know he played every game, but there was always a, a niggle that he was managed through the week, wasn't training, had the back issue, and it's just, it was stressful. And I've, yeah. I've spoken to you off air about it a couple of times and a lot of people who are in this chat. I just think the way that Fremantle dropped off so badly last year, I think they could change up their exit strategy down back. And as... Luke Ryan still might be taking kick-ins. It's just um, the fact I don't think they'll be as stagnant when he kicks it in, gets the kick back, kicks it to someone else and like really hold the ball and then exit D50. It might just be a big bomb out with the kick-in. Um, like obviously, he's still going to get a lot of points for the kick-ins, but in terms of the repeat kicks back-to-back, -back, I think that he might get a, a few less per game. If, yep. John, John um, Justin Longmere wants to keep his job. They got to do something down there because it's. I completely agree. Completely agree. Like they played, what two years ago they played in a was a semi, or uh, yeah, something? against Collingwood semi at the J. Yeah, right? and and oh, clearly, like that, I know that they lost that, but they they still had a fantastic year. And then the year just gone, they were 
yeah, terrible. I agree. Something's got to change. I don't know if it will, though. Um, maybe Hayden Young moving into the midfield gives Luke Ryan more of a monopoly on what's going on back there, and he literally just pigs it up even more. But, yeah, I, I don't know. Um, the Sir 420, Damien Hardwick has been told to win a flag in three years by the Suns, according to Mitch Cleary. Can they do it? Six-year contract needing major results by the end of the third. Um Personally, within three years, probably not. I don't think so. Like, they've got the talent there. Like, you can't question it. But it just makes me think, like, uh, it just, like, so many things can play out in finals. Like, realistically, who who's going to beat Brisbane up at the Gabba? Like, who who's going to do that? Like, I don't think there's any team that would do that, realistically. And sometimes you fall lucky on the good side of the draw in finals, but I just yeah I don't I don't see them and I don't see them coming down to the G to play any of the Victorian sides and having great success against them. It's just maybe maybe in their fourth or fifth year. I don't, I don't know. That's just my opinion. What do you What do you think, mate? I think it's it's always possible. Like you're. Collingwood boys, you see them go from what was it, seventeenth to the next year top four, and then the next year granny. And I think uh, yeah, Richmond even did something similar after 2016, 13th to a flag, and uh, it does happen sometimes, but mm-hmm. it's going to be hard, like you said, just with the um, every interstate team has to travel more, play the granny at the G. But yep. I think they do have the pieces. Like, they have a very solid stocks in terms of their young talent. You know, like, Rao, Anderson, Miller, Wits is a very good midfield. And then they've got pick top 10 picks all over the ground. Up yep. forward, down back. They do have the pieces. And they've just picked up Walter, Rogers, and Reid all in top 15 picks. They've got a couple more coming next season and... They do take time, but Walter's a man mountain already. So it's hard yeah. to say, but a lot of the time these reports coming out by the media, that's not actually what the the uh, plans are. So no, we'll see if it actually is a flag in three years. Completely agree, mate. Um, Johnny Boy has another one. Lads, name your best rookie for the season. Um, if named round zero, it's Finlay McRae, and there's no doubt about it. Yours, mate? Well, just quickly on that, do you think he's going to be named around zero, round one? Absolutely. I I just don't understand. And I know you've pointed it out with Steele at the best and fairest, um, how his speech has made you, I guess, question in a good way whether he can get back to his best. Makes me think, now I watched the Copeland Trophy and in a premiership year, there was not many names mentioned, yet McRae mentioned McRae, so Finley, a lot, quite a lot. And it wasn't in the context of, oh, this bloke's had a fantastic VFL year. It was more in the context of we're getting that second wave of players coming through. So there was a lot of emphasis on himself, McInnes, Jacob Ryan, um, Ed Allen as well. It just... There, yeah, there was something there that tells me. I think Taylor Adams saw the writing on the wall, um, and I think Flies basically said to McRae, "Don't look around for another deal because you're going to be starting in that midfield come or round zero next year." What are your thoughts, mate? Who's who's your um, best rookie for the season? Uh probably two. The the easy answer, the vanilla answer, is McKercher. You know, we saw yep. what Sheezel was able to do off that half back line in his first year. And McKercher yep. has some genuine Zach Merritt traits in him. The way he keeps Absolutely. the way he runs. When he um, runs around size. the man on the mark, that left foot, yep, chuck him in an Essendon jumper. And yeah, absolutely. Hard to say. Yep. So yeah, he's definitely one. And he was amazing for the Allies and Tassie last uh, last year in his draft year. Um so he's the he's one the obvious one, and then the other one is if he can get into that dogs team, Caulfield. You know, one hundred twenty three k. He's yep. averaged seventy nine before in his career. Um, he's just had really bad injury troubles, but Caulfield's definitely one I reckon. Yeah, it seems to be. Um, I mean, 
It's it's interesting because you'd love to see him play, but it's completely plausible that he's not in that side at all. Which would, yeah. would be unfortunate. Yeah, it would be. I, I haven't actually seen too much reports about him um, coming out of the dogs. But I guess obviously. with someone with that kind of uh, injury pedigree and history, it's probably a good thing. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I do yeah. think, you know, he's a top 10 draft pick, has played good footy in the past. I do think that if he is fit, he can get into that team. Um, yeah. Yep. It's just a wait and see. No, and that that's wrapped us up. So thank you. And I, I love Paulie. Paulie in the chat, he's he's always getting into me about the pies. Um, and it's it's fantastic to see that, you know, a Hawthorne supporter, even though they, they traded Tommy Mitchell and they thought he was worth absolutely nothing, has gone on to be a premiership player. So thank you very much for that, mate. Really appreciate it. Um, but everyone that was in tonight, in the chat, wonderful to have you. Um, even the comments we couldn't read out, we say it every week. Just thank you so much for putting it in there. The time and I guess the the um, sickness of those minds collaborating together to put some funny content in there to make us all laugh. It was fantastic and we appreciate every single one of you. Um, like and subscribe, everyone. You know where to find us. It's available on YouTube, Spotify. Join the Supercoach Hub on Discord. It's just continuous Supercoach news discussions. There's a lot of things in there. I can see Josh, he's reading a few comments right now. He's loving it. Um, normally, he's the one sending it in. Link tree is in the bio. Like, follow, subscribe on YouTube, uh, Spotify, and definitely on X as well. You can find me at Scobie Bryant 36 Always up for a conversation. Joshy, where can the listeners find you, mate? Uh, on X at JG2325, just the the display name I've got there. You can see me talk some shit and some statistics, really. Perfect, mate. And once again, if anyone's keen on that disgusting format of draft or needs some info about rookies, literally, this man, he is your man. Absolutely fantastic. Um, but thank you so much for joining us, mate. And... Once again, I will, we'll ask you now, are you going to be on next week with us? If you want me on, I'll be on. Absolutely, mate. It's, um, as I said, I will be needing a massage soon. Shoulders are a bit sore because, well, Vern has decided to um, ditch for this week. And as I said, Supercoach Pleb is currently a missing persons case. We don't know what's happened to him, but I'm sure, well, I hope he'll be able to contribute sometime soon. So that'd be fantastic. Once again, thanks for listening. Thanks for joining into the stream, everyone. And we look forward to seeing you next week. Same time, same place. Please like, subscribe, converse on X, Twitter, and join the Discord for more. And just awesome continual Supercoach discussion and news. Thank you very much, everyone. And thank you, Joshy, for joining us, mate. It's been fantastic to no have you on. And definitely see you next week, buddy. Too easy. Wonderful. Thanks, everyone. Have a great night.